Disney's stupid reservation system almost ruined my anniversary at D23. Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net, and this is going to be a video that's a little different than what we normally do on this channel. When we are not talking about, you know, movie pass, we're usually doing movie reviews, we're discussing anime, sometimes Sailor Moon. Today's topic would normally not be necessarily out of the ordinary. We're talking about, well, Disney, and we are talking about D23. Yep, D23. Expo 2022, the ultimate Disney fan event and that is normally something that would be a positive thing to talk about like hey we had a lot of fun and in all fairness we did have some fun i don't want to act like what happened at d23 this weekend was a complete buzzkill or anything like that however i do want to mention that d23 this year was vastly different from d23 of years past now for those of you who want some context i have been going to d23 for a while not every single year not every single year, but it's one of the conventions that's definitely very, very easy for me to go to. It's like 30 minutes away from where I live. It's not particularly expensive. I love Disney. I actually know a lot of people who work at Disney, so normally I can kind of get in on some of those events without having to try very hard. And this year at D23 was going to be a particularly special one. First of all, it was the first D23 that I can remember since COVID started that I have been to. And also, it was going to be the celebration of my third year anniversary with my wife, Katie. Now, we are huge Disney fans. We expressed this on the channel. We had a Disney-themed wedding. You could click that little link below, above, I should say, and uh, watch our wedding video. It's a lot of fun. She loves that video. I love that video. And so, celebrating our anniversary at a Disney event seemed to make a lot of sense. And... You know, she had never really been to a convention convention before. She didn't know what panels were. She didn't know really any of this. And I would like to say it was the most magical, wonderful anniversary you could hope for. Unfortunately, because of some changes that were made to how things were lined up and queued, it just didn't turn out that way. So what am I talking about? Well, first of all, most conventions, you have to wait in line to enter a panel or something. This has been something that has been common and standard for conventions for many, many years. And Disney, because they're Disney, they decide they want to reinvent the wheel. They're getting tired of fire hazards, even though you can work your way around that by spacing people out in the lines. And they wanted to control the flow of traffic. So they decided to do what... I kind of expected them to do because it's a very Disney thing to do. They have a virtual queuing system in Disneyland and they figured what if we brought that queuing system and we brought it to the D23 Expo? What's more, what if instead of waiting in line for things, we have people tell us which events they would like to go to the most, rank them one to three, and we will put them in a reservation. That way they don't even have to wait in line. They can just show up and they can enjoy their little convention. Okay, I mean that, that, that kind of makes sense on paper to a certain extent. So we pay for our tickets in March. And in September, no, it's September now, in August, we start getting emails, hey, what panels and events would you like to go to? And they list it. Now, of course, I now I don't select Marvel or Star Wars or anything like that. I put Star Wars up high just because my wife wanted to, but there were other panels I think we would have enjoyed a lot more. And I figure, well, you know, I'm sure they would let us at least have our number one or number two pick at least once or twice. The reality was not that at all. We didn't get any of our number one picks or any of our number two picks. We got our number three and number four picks, which were basically events on that stage that yeah if we had to if we got stuck with something we'd do that but we didn't really want to do those there were other things we wanted to do so right off the bat going into d23 we didn't have reservations for a single panel 
we wanted to actually do. Which is weird because it's like you'd think it we'd get at least one. Like, I know there's a lot of people that go to these things, but what made us the unlucky person that on all three of the days, on all of the stages, we didn't get any of our one, number one and number two picks. They were all the third or fourth pick. That's a little weird, and I was not happy about that per se. So, anyway, whatever. We hear that there's going to be some standby lines for these anyway. Like, hey, if you show up 15 minutes before the panel begins, then if there's any seats left over, you can go in. But here's the thing. Even though they said you have to show 15 minutes before, people start showing up long before then. Now, the volunteers and the cast members, I mean, I, I don't begrudge them. They are doing the best they can. And sure, to be fair, I am not entitled to anything. Even if it's my anniversary, I'm not entitled to anything per se. But they basically just kept shooing people away. Don't start a line. Don't start a line. But it's not like people actually went away. They just started walking around circles Areas got crowded. It was probably more of a fire hazard than if they had just had a line and told people where to go. But I digress. Once the line actually opens, there's like a almost a stampede rush. And it resulted on Friday us not seeing a single panel at the convention. I got a lot of shopping done. And we met a few people. Um in person, particularly Andrea Deja, like that was really, really awesome. But ultimately, we didn't get to do any panels. And here's another thing, the shopping. There were some exclusive items that we wanted. My wife particularly wanted this D23 exclusive bag that looks like a lounge fly. It's not technically a lounge fly, but it looks like one. It's like the backpack she loves to collect. She really wanted it. And it's like, okay, where do you buy this? Disney's D23 app didn't actually tell you where you could find some of these exclusive items. What they did was they said, these are the big stores. You know, you have D23 Marketplace, you have the third floor D23, you have the Mod, Mickey of Glendale, Disney Hollywood Studios. And it's not like you could just walk into these stores. These stores apparently had exclusive merchandise that you could only get at the event. And so you had to jump into a virtual queue. Now that's bad enough as it is. Like, I have to wake up at 6 a.m. before the convention opens. I have to get into a virtual line for one of these stores. And I don't even know if this store is going to have the thing that I want. And then what's more, having the D23 Expo app isn't enough to even do this. You know what you need to do? You need to have the Disneyland app, an app that I have not had for months because we've not been able to afford the, to go to the park. You have to have the Disneyland app. So you have to go to the D23 Expo app, select the store, ask to jump into the queue, have it open the Disney app, and hopefully you can join the virtual queue there. First day, which was Friday, I didn't get into any of the virtual queues at 6 a.m. At 1 p.m., I got into the D23 marketplace, but by that point, the stuff that I wanted from there was sold out. So I didn't get anything. Uh, the next couple days, I had much more luck. I did get into the D23 marketplace again. This time, they did have at least one of the items, that Starbucks tumbler, and we were able to get one of those but we couldn't get into the third floor. We also got into Mod and we went in. I didn't like any of the merchandise there. I mean, I guess I like a Muppet Show t-shirt, but not enough to buy it. And we walked away. That's when we started hearing because word spreads where certain items are being found. And we found out, oh no, this item that you want is actually gonna be at this store, but they might not have it anymore because of the whole it, and look, I know that this is kind of like a par for the course problem with Disney stuff, particularly when it comes to scalping. And I'm a scalper. I acknowledge that this is one of the problems. I'm not upset if I don't get an item. If I go someplace and it's not there, fine. But to set up a system where basically I have to get into a virtual queue and go to a store, and I don't even know what they're selling. I'm kind of taking a chance that I'm spending this time, 
I'm going to the store, and do I even want anything there? Like, am I not only wasting my time, but am I depriving someone else of a spot at this location because I didn't know what they sold? I had to take a spot to see what they sold, and ultimately, I didn't even like anything. Didn't even like anything. <sighs> Interesting. So anyway, uh, so Saturday comes up, and you know we do get into the D23 Marketplace and Mod, as I mentioned, but what about the panels? Did I get to see any panels? Did I get to see the beloved Muppet Christmas Carol panel? No. No, because we didn't have reservations for any of them. And when we showed up to the letter 15 minutes, in some cases 30 minutes before the panel started, they were filled up, wouldn't let us in. So a second day went by without seeing a panel. And here's the thing, this is where you start getting a little cynical about the whole thing. Because it's like, yeah, you, I was gonna shop, I was gonna buy things, I'm glad with some of the stuff that I bought. I got a signed up record by Michael Jamako, the Oscar winning composer who won the Oscar for that movie. Definitely happy to have that, it was only $25. But two days in and none of the panels. Man, that stinks. And I'm starting to wonder, are we going to get through the entire convention without seeing a single panel? So Sunday comes, and Sunday I've got a little bit more hope. First of all, I actually do get a spot on the third floor uh, D23 marketplace where most of the exclusive items are sold that is the hardest one to get into so i get it but of course it's going to happen so much farther in the day that guess what when the virtual queue opens at one again i can't get another reservation so there's that but oh well at least i have that and we go to d23 and we actually manage to get into a panel and it's a panel for the upcoming Mickey Mouse documentary. And uh, it, it looks really good, by the way. I, I do want to see it. And it was great to see Eric Goldberg up there and Floyd Norman. And we got to meet Floyd Norman later. Like, that, that was all fun. But then the 100 Years of the Parks, nope, don't have a reservation, can't come in. The 100 Years of Animation, can't get in. Um, and then it kind of, and Leslie Iwerks, I didn't get to meet because, again, the line too long, cut it off, although that one was not a reservation system, that was just a ticketed event, and I kind of misunderstood how popular Leslie Iwerks would be. I probably shouldn't have underestimated because she's an awesome documentary filmmaker, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to meet her, but, you know. So, we're now there at like 3 o'clock. We've done a lot of shopping, we have met some people, and meeting the people, admittingly, those memories are going to save this whole thing, because... Those are memories we will cherish. But essentially, we are not doing any of the things that we paid to do because Disney set up a system that won't allow us to do it. So I finally decide, let's go to guest services. Let's go to guest services. You know, sometimes Disney um, employees, cast members, I should say, they will do special things for you, especially when they know, hey, this is our anniversary. We you know, we don't want to feel like we're complaining, we don't want to act like we've get, we're getting special privilege, but we came to see some panels, and we're not doing it because of something Disney set up. And we tell the cast member this the story, politely, I should mention, and I say, is there any chance whatsoever that we can do the Disney Princess concert. That's not something I personally want to do, but my wife would love it. She would absolutely love it. Can we not do this one thing? This one thing. They can't help us in that regard. Now, to this cast member's credit, he did what he could to make our night. He came back with a couple of lithographs from the Marvel panel that hadn't been given out. We, we got a couple exclusive pins that you can only get at the convention. We got a bunch of free movie tickets to see Disney movies through Fandango and some gift certificates for the Disney store. And he gave us two wristbands to see the princesses in conversation, which is basically a voice actor panel where they talk to the voice actresses who voice the Disney princesses. And I think my wife would love that. 
So that's great. I give that guy a lot of props for, for trying. Unfortunately, we're kind of unable to use it, and here's why. And some of you might say this is on me. Maybe it is, but here's the thing. We finally get to go to the third floor, and we get into the D23 exclusive merchandise thing. That's where we find out that the D23 backpack is no longer available. We find out a lot of the merchandise that was there is no longer available. Basically, they have just a few things left. Pins, the Starbucks tumbler, which I we get extra ones because why not? They would make good Christmas gifts. And I do splurge on this lightsaber set. It's a really nice set. It sets me back way too much money. Don't want to admit how much I actually spent on that, but we do get that. The thing is, this lightsaber thing is heavy. It's got to be at least 30 pounds. It's not a light thing. But hey, you know what? Where the store is, where the garage is, it's right there. Let's just take it and put it in the car and come back. And I say let's do that because at 30 pounds, I can't be carrying this around. I'm going to throw my back out or something. So we go to the garage. We go to the door that we, that we came from early that morning. And it's locked. We ask the police officer nearby, this is our door. Can we please just go in and take this thing up and put it in our car? She says, go down to the intersection, make a right. The entrance is there. About a mile of walking is added just to put this in the car. And this is a 30 pound item. We get to the car. My back is hurting. My arms are aching. We're both sweating a lot. And now to top it all off, we're hungry. The convention food is overpriced and not very good. My wife doesn't want to eat it. I don't blame her. We had talked about going to Naples, walking to downtown Disney and getting Naples, my favorite restaurant. At this point, I can't even imagine walking five more steps. We can drive off the lot and go somewhere to eat, but then we can't come back because the garage is closed. And we just look at each other for a few minutes. Like, what are we going to do? Like, this, we want to do the voice actress panel. We have to do at least one main panel. We have... This can't be the end. Is this really how the anniversary is going to end? That we spent a... We walked a mile to get someplace that should have taken us three to four minutes, but it took us 20? What are we going to do? And I find myself getting stressed. I'm holding it together. I'm doing as good a job as I can. And I think, I think my wife sees the writing on the wall. That to continue to try to find a good place to eat and see the voice actors thing, it's a losing game at this point. So she says, tell you what, honey. Why don't we just go to Black Angus? We love Black Angus. Let's just go there. We don't need to see the, the panel. I can tell she's disappointed. But I also can't bring myself to argue with her at this point. I think she's tired too. So we leave D23, having gone to one panel, a good one, mind you. We never wanted to go to that panel in the first place. It was not on our radar. It just happened to be the one panel that we were nearby and it was available. And that was how our anniversary of D23 ended. And I'm kind of sitting here reflecting on it. And this was so terrible at what Disney did. I, you know, I, I've heard that Disney basically was not being very communicative and this system was broken. In fact, John Campia 
fellow YouTuber, um, much bigger than I am, by the way. He got media credential passes, and he was promised to go into the panels. He splurged, dipped into the business bank to get really nice hotel rooms and everything because they were they were going there to work. And he didn't get into the panels. He followed the letter to the T, didn't get into anything. And that speaks volumes to just how poorly the system was set up. And here's another thing you have to keep in mind. I do not like this because it turned D23 into gambling. Now, some of you might be saying, well, it was always a gamble. You can't ever do everything you want to do. Y you know, sometimes the line would be too long. Sometimes it gets cut off. I totally understand that. That's convention life. But I've never been to a convention where you knew in advance that you basically had little to no chance of going to the panels you wanted to see. In advance. It used to be... You saw the line, okay, maybe that line's a little too long, I don't think I'm going to get in, don't want to waste my time. What about this panel? Okay, that line looks reasonable. Let's go into that one. It wasn't like that, though. Every panel we went to, we got shooed away because we didn't have a reservation. And when we tried to do the standby, the reservations either filled up so that there was really no standby anyway, or it was filled up because people didn't really follow the no lining up rule very well. And it's extremely weird to think that, okay, so basically, I bought the tickets in advance, and I knew in advance I probably could not see the panels that I wanted to see. But there's no refund option. There's nothing. I mean, that, that seems kind of kind of cruel. It's one of the reasons why I don't like Disney's reservation system for the rides at Disneyland. You know what? If the line's too long, I understand if you can't get in there. But to basically say, hey, the lines are full for the entire day, and almost every time you go there, there's a good chance you're not going to get to ride certain rides, unless you pay for it, of course. <sighs> this was awful. This was awful. Awful. Now, I did say that this almost ruined the anniversary. And I said almost because I would be completely lying if I said our weekend was completely ruined. The reality is we did have a lot of fun. We did do some nice shopping. We got to meet some awesome people, including Leonard Malton. And we even met this family in the Floyd Norman line, uh, if they if they're watching, you guys are awesome, by the way. And they basically, when they found out it was our anniversary and what big fans we were of, of Floyd Norman, they a couple of them gave up their spots so that we could cut the line. And thank goodness they did that because our the line that the portion of the line we were in, we would not have got to see him. So we are so grateful to that family. And you know, the one meal that we did have at the Expo met this family, husband, wife, son. They were awesome. If they're watching this, we complained about the Disney prices and how the magic is going away. It was nice to know that they were having some of the same problems. Not, not nice to know that they were struggling as well, but nice to know that it wasn't just me. That wasn't just me in my head thinking like, oh well, maybe I feel entitled. No, Disney really did not set this up properly. And here's the sad thing: I don't know if they're actually going to fix it. Yes, I'm going to make this video. Yes, I'm going to write them a letter. Yeah, I'm going to complain. But what does it matter at the end of the day? They got my money. They don't care. Once they have your money, they don't care anymore. And I just, I don't like it. I thought that was, the whole weekend was... <sighs> Look, we had fun, and it's the anniversary. How could I not be happy to be celebrating my anniversary? But Disney, this uh, this reservation system, it, it just doesn't work. I know that there's no guarantee anyway if you don't have the system, but you have to let people line up. You have to just place the line somewhere, and you have to give people a chance to get into the panels that they want to get into. And, you know, if you're going to do the virtual queue for the shops, we have to know what's in those shops so that we know whether we even want to go there in the first place. So, 
anyway, that's my complaint about D23 2022. Will I be going back next year? I don't know. Katie has indicated that she would like to. So the lack of panels obviously didn't deter her too much if we do go again next year. But have a very similar experience, then that will be it. I will step back and we won't do it again. But now I would like to ask all of you a question. Did you go to D23? What did you think of all this? And was your experience better than ours? I'd love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.